it felt absolutely inevitable that BYU would have changes on their coaching staff after a 5-7 and seven finish to their season, including a five-game losing streak. Well, two of those changes came on Monday with both offensive line coach Daryl Funk as well as tight ends coach Steve Clark being let go. We're talking about the impact of both of them leaving BYU as well as we're talking BYU tight end position in our position group debriefings. All ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you, by the way, who are also everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And by way of introduction, once again, we are your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports, particularly BYU football and basketball. We got plenty of other coverage uh, that we do as well. All right, a quick reminder that today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel, of course, wants to help you guys out, have some fun in uh, the betting world. This episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with our friends at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. And BYU has made the moves I think we long expected. One, uh, uh, not surprise, one, a pretty decent sized surprise. Uh, what I mean by that is Daryl Funk, offensive line, Daryl Funk, BYU's offensive line coach. The writing was on the wall, felt like for weeks that uh, he inevitably would be let go by Kalani Satake once the season ended. Kalani is not a fan of making moves in season, and for good reason. Uh, you don't want to have that, obviously, the upheaval of having to adjust on the fly and throw guys into roles they may be uh, wholly unfamiliar familiar with so he decided to wait until the season ended which happened on Saturday and then on Monday official word coming down uh, that Daryl Funk has been let go as BYU's offensive line coach now the big surprise in many respects was that tight ends coach Steve Clark also was shown the door by the BYU football program uh, and let me also add that there's been a number of uh, people out there speculating that Steve Clark may have left on of his own volition uh, or may have retired whatever you think he may have done what I can tell you is the way I understand it is he was let go it was this was not his decision to leave BYU so uh, there you go. The two changes on BYU staff as things stand right now. Those are the only changes as of uh, recording of this podcast in terms of changes on Kalani Satake's staff. A lot of rumors and innuendo out there regarding Harvey Unga. It looks like Harvey will get a reprieve for at least another year uh, unless something unforeseen happens. But also at the same time, could one or two of these assistants in the upcoming uh coaching uh, cycle uh, find new roles at new universities. That's not out of the question. So that's also a way that more changes could come to BYU. But when you have a five and seven season, you lose five straight to end the year. And two of your most glaring weaknesses on the offense are the offensive line and tight ends position. Yeah. I think you're going to obviously uh, have to face the music as position, position coaches. These guys know when they, what they sign up for as coaches, they're hired to be fired. I've heard that from so many coaches, both at the pro and collegiate levels in my decade plus career uh, doing sports media and sports radio. They talk about it all the time and they know what they have signed up for. And you, you get in because you, love what you're doing. You love having an impact on young men and obviously uh, being involved with the sport that you love. But at the same time, you know, when you're, uh, when your position group or your program doesn't do as uh, well as expectations are, well, ultimately people have to pay the price. And that is in the, the result of two assistants being let go by BYU. I think that Daryl Funk, his position group, obviously uh, struggled throughout the most of the, this season. Crazily enough, the last two games of the regular season, honestly, were the best for BYU's offensive line from my vantage point. Uh, we're going to have Connor Pay on the podcast tomorrow. We'll get his insight on what he expects uh, and what he thinks of the offensive line under Daryl Funk. We'll talk about all of that, so uh, stay tuned for that edition of the podcast, but the, the offensive line just was not good enough. And Daryl Funk uh, needed to be let go. The biggest thing I think BYU needs in terms of their offensive lines, they need somebody who can come in and coach up the young talent in this offensive line group, uh, offensive line group is what I'm trying to say. Not groom, not groom room. You know what I'm trying to say? Groom, you know, I got it. All right. But nonetheless, they need somebody to come in and be the technician that can uh, coach these guys up too often. It felt like guys were left to their own devices under Daryl Funk in terms of the skill, the, the technique, 
technique required to operate in BYU's offense. The offensive line needs to be one of the chief strengths, if not the overall chief strength of Kalani Satake's football program. This is a, a program for 50 plus years. You can go back to the heyday of Lavelle Edwards. You can go through Bronco Mendenhall's run and also Kalani Satake's run. When BYU has been its absolute best, they've had very good quarterback play, but in front of that, they've had absolutely dominant offensive line play. BYU shouldn't be the 118th ranked team in the rushing output as an offensive line. They should not have 100 anything in the rankings when it comes to their offensive line group. They can be better than that. They know they must be better than that. And that is why Daryl Funk is out of a job. Uh, I like Daryl Funk as a human being. I've got nothing but uh, good feelings for him. And I wish him nothing but the best as he moves on here. He's got a 30 plus year uh, career uh coaching run he's been in a number of different places he's coaching very high level offensive linemen but in some ways it feels like BYU realized you know what we cannot continue the course of action we're taking with the offensive line now with the tight ends group really the reason why I think Steve Clark is out of a job is because outside of Isaac Rex who of the tight ends group has produced to any significant degree in the recent past I'll wait because there's zero Mason wake. Maybe Mason wake took a medical retirement before this, this past season even began. Ethan Erickson didn't do much for him, but Mata Ava Taase didn't do much. Ray Paulo uh, Jackson Bowers was any, unable to see the field on anything other than special teams, apparently this year for BYU. So you got to get a guy in there at the tight end position who similar to the offensive line can coach their guys up, but it's not necessarily as critical. It feels like for me on the tight end side of things to have an absolute technician, a guy who can break it down because when it comes to tight ends, how many are you really going to play in any given game? Three guys at the most, whereas an offensive line, you have five guys literally on every single play. To me, if BYU is going to replace these two, you find an offensive line coach, a guru, if you will, who probably gets a run game coordinator, maybe an assistant head coach title to bump their pay to make it uh, commensurate with probably what these guys are expecting as they come in to take over this offensive line. But for me, the tight end position, if you're going to continue to have tight ends coached by one individual coach, or maybe you fold them in with the with the offensive line. Okay, that's another way to get some extra money in the pocket of a new assistant, and maybe you hire a full time quarterbacks coach. But if you are planning on sticking with the tight ends position individually with a position coach, you go out there and find an ace recruiter. Now, Steve Clark was a very, very solid recruiter. I'm not saying that he was not. He actually, in many respects, might have been BYU's best offensive recruiter outside of Aaron Roderick. He was very, very good at what he did. But I, I, what I'm trying to say is you want a guy who's willing to recruit at a high level and doesn't necessarily have to pertain just to tight ends. They can recruit any position along that offense, maybe even some defensive players. They're just a, a, a dog, if you will. Just want, you know, D-A-W-G, one of those guys who really get, just gets after it. Get a young, hungry, up-and-coming coach who wants nothing more than to spend all their time on the road out there finding the next gem for the BYU offense, even if it's not necessarily for their own position group at tight end. Yes, they always have to coach up their position group, make sure that the tight ends are doing their job. But it feels like to me that the offensive line coach needs to be more in the mold of a coordinator where they have maybe less responsibility uh, in, to a degree in terms of the recruiting side of things while coaching up their unit, making sure that offensive line is the biggest, baddest you-know-whats on the football field, whereas tight end is similar to the running backs coach position in my mind where they're supposed to be one of those recruiting guys who just is out there chasing every lead possible, trying to find the best talent possible for BYU and selling that talent on why they should come to Brigham Young University and play for the BYU football program. So there you go. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, it's it's a tough business. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And when you have a, a program that falls short of expectations, no matter what those expectations may have been, BYU ultimately had to make changes. And Daryl Funk and Steve Clark are now out of a job. And we'll have continuing coverage here in the coming days and weeks with uh, – Guys, I'm going to think about this. I'll, I'll probably do an episode later this week with options. I, I What I feel like would be guys BYU should chase at both positions, speaking of tight ends coach as well as offensive line coach. I think a number of them are very clear. Guys like Jeff Grimes, Andrew Mitchell, DJ T. Alavea up at Utah State. There's a number of names out there, but I'm going to have to do some digging on that and see what I can find out with regards to people uh, that BYU may be targeting. We'll talk about that later this week. But the tight end position, I mentioned that it was really Isaac Rex and who else? Well, we're going to do a position group debriefing, no time like the present, to talk about BYU's tight ends. What does the present look like? What does the future look like? And what ultimately uh, is the letter grade for BYU from this past season from that position group? We'll talk about all that as we continue on right here.
on Locked On Cougars. A word real quick on our friends over at FanDuel, though. Of course, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot with our friends at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Simply put, it's $150 into your account if your team wins. Simple, my friends. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action, and the app is easy to use. And the best part is you can do a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders. They have daily, uh, uh, what do they call them? Daily plays, whatever you want. Daily specials, probably I should call them. And they've got that all available to you guys. If you want to bet on the NBA, college hoops, uh, upcoming bowl season, college football playoff, like I said, also the NFL, they've got it all for you guys with our friends at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season in style. Out, my friends, that's fanduel.com slash locked on and have some fun today with our friends at FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to remind you guys to check out the first ever national 20 national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube called Locked On Sports Today. It is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league across the sports universe. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel right now. All right, uh, let's talk about BYU's uh, tight end position. now. This is a group that has got a lot of potential in it. And I, what I mean by that is there are a lot of stars in terms of the star ratings of guys coming in from the high school ranks. There's a lot of proven production with at least one player who I think is on his way out in Isaac Rex. And there's a lot of question marks as well about the remaining guys in the room. Can they live up uh, to the expectations of them and really uh, take over in the absence of a guy like Isaac Rex? So let's start off. Isaac Rex obviously is a, is a legend. For BYU, he now holds the career mark uh, for touchdowns from B for a BYU tight end in his career. He still has a year of eligibility if he so desires to come back to play to B, for BYU. But everything I am hearing and or kind of noticing with him is that he has all but said his goodbyes to the BYU football program. It is awful in many respects that his final play potentially for BYU was that fumble uh, in that loss to Oklahoma State. That is a really, really rough way to go out. Uh, obviously, he was in tears after the game, and I understand why, because he's emotional, probably thinking, that's how I'm going to go out in my BYU career, trying to make a play, and I get it stripped out from me, and my knee lands on the foot of another guy when I could have been down. Just brutal, brutal break, but nothing should take away from the fact that Isaac Rex has been the guy for BYU at tight end. I, I said earlier on on today's show, it's really been a position group of Isaac Rex and who else? The funny thing about it is Isaac Rex, many of us point back to his 2020 campaign when he broke onto the scene. What do you have? 12 touchdown catches that year with Zach Wilson slinging the rock all over the field. And many of us thought, man, he's never going to reprise that type of numbers. This past year, folks, he really approached those numbers and got really close to those numbers once again. It, I don't know what his NFL prospects are going to be, but if it is his time to move on from the BYU football program, got nothing but the utmost respect for Isaac Rex. He has been an incredible representative of this university. You can tell he absolutely has loved his time as a BYU Cougar. He's talked about the fact that he grew up a BYU fan. Uh, his dad obviously was a BYU legend in his own right. His younger brother Preston's on the BYU roster right now as a defensive back. It's a family affair when it comes to the Isaac Rex family, and we wish him nothing but the best as he moves forward here with his career if that is ultimately where it's going to land. Now that leaves a hole in BYU's lineup, like unlike many in BYU's lineup right now is it when Isaac Rex if he moves on who steps up in his absence is it Ethan Erickson is it Mata Avataase is it uh, Anthony Olsen is it Ray Paulo is it Jackson Bowers there are so many bodies here for BYU that feel like they have a lot of potential but the production is in severe lacking territory. You just don't have a lot of proven options. The hope is that Jackson Bowers will put it together this offseason, get in the weight room, transform his body, really improve upon uh, his God-given talent as a tight end, and maybe he can emerge next uh, spring in spring camp and really take over his position group. Maybe Ethan Erickson has put all of his injury woes that cost him most of this season before he uh, came back late in the season, and he can really emerge as a, a solid receiving threat for BYU. There's always been that thought that he is like uh, just waiting to break out. It's getting late in his career. I think, yeah, he's going to be officially a junior, I think, this year. He's got to make a move. He's going to do that. Mata Avataase, there was so much promise it felt like going into the season from him, but there was no production of really, really any note. And same thing with Ray Paulo. A lot of people thought that he could come in and really be the next uh, Mason, uh, Mason Wake type of player. Neither one of them really lived up to the expectations. They were solid at points in terms of the run blocking, but by and large, the run blocking from BYU's tight ends and their blocking in general was subpar this season. 
And I think that might be part of the reason why Steve Clark ultimately was let go of his position. Just the, the, the production was not there across the board from this tight end group. You also have other tight ends on this list, including Anthony Olsen, who's a walk-on that a lot of people think is an a- athletic marvel. Can he realize his potential? Bentley Redden is back on the roster for BYU after originally coming back from a LDS mission, a, a, a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and deciding uh, that he didn't necessarily want to play football once again. He is back on the roster. He is a freshman. Who knows uh, what the future holds for him? You also have Nathan Coleman, a former three-star prospect who walked on to BYU as well. What can he prove? Uh, and then, like I said, Jackson Bowers is a four-star prospect. Can you get more out of him uh, during this off-season period? Can you get him to really show up in spring ball and really show what he's capable of? You also have guys in the pipeline like a Reiner Swanson, another four-star prospect out of uh, Southern California down there. Can, can he be the guy for BYU? Like I said, there are so many names here of all of these tight ends, and it feels like, okay, there is potential. There, there, like every one of the guys, you have something you can point to and think, okay, there's potential. The problem is potential is just that. It's potential. You need to see proven production out there from this BYU tight end group. It is my sincere hope that Ethan Erickson and Jackson Bowers take this offseason very seriously, and they come into spring ball absolutely hell-bent on making sure that that position group is theirs. Mataba Taase and Ray Paulo should have that same thought in their roles. Mason Fakahua, a guy I forgot to mention earlier on as well. Mason Fakahua has been around this program for quite a while, but got supplanted at that fullback, H-back role by Ray Paulo. Does he respond in any degree and really kind of maybe earn some more playing time on the football field? Spring is going to be a very critical time for all these guys to prove what they're capable of because, by the way, they're going to have a new position coach coaching them up. No matter if it's a combined coach who coaches offensive line and tight ends or if it's an individual tight ends coach, they're going to have to improve prove and obviously show they're capable to that new coach if they want to earn playing time on the football field. Steve Clark probably had a pecking order in his mind of what he kind of thought the next uh, thing I don't know the next thing, the next kind of next few guys in his mind uh, in terms of the pipeline for BYU, but he's he's out of the program now. So obviously there is going to be holes here for BYU's tight ends and the opportunity exists for all of them to go out and show what they're capable of. So That brings me to my overall conclusion from this past season for BYU tight ends group. It wasn't enough. Like I'll say it once again, it was Isaac Rex and a bunch of dudes that that is sad to say, because there is, like I said, there's a lot of names on that list. You'd like to think are better than what they put on the football field this year. So the tight ends group, similar to the quarterback position, which we talked about on yesterday's podcast is I would give a letter grade to the tight ends group. I'll give them a C and I'll give the C only because Isaac Rex's production, like I said, approached what he had done as a freshman. When he really bust onto the scene, he has proven that he has recovered as close to a full hundred percent as he could from that horrific ankle injury but the sad part is the other guys around him did not step up to any significant degree and help him out had they done that the fortunes of BYU's football season may have been a little bit different I I can't say that it would have made all the difference and obviously it would have gotten BYU a sixth win out there because the whole thing is is is, if and if it's if ifs and buts were candy and nuts we'd all have a merry Christmas I get all of that but the thing is I'll give him a C but it's just not good enough and now when you lose Isaac Rex what does that letter grade drop to? Like a D, a D minus, and now you've got a whole big question mark there. Does BYU potentially go into the transfer portal market and bring in a proven tight end if they can find one out there? It's not another realm of possibility for BYU as well. So uh, the other thing about this is, is, will there be defections out of the football program because of Steve's Clark, Steve Clark's decision uh, to step aside from BYU? That wouldn't surprise me either. Could Ryder Swanson ultimately decide that he wants to go elsewhere? Maybe so, but he sounds similar to what Isaac Rex is, where BYU is kind of in his blood. It's where he's always wanted to be. Could Jackson Bowers be upset with his lack of playing time as a freshman and decide, you know what? This is for the birds. I'm moving on. Could Anthony Olsen, could Ethan Erickson, could any of these guys decide that they want to go and try playing elsewhere? Similar to former BYU tight end Dallin Holker, who found a great role for himself on a middling uh, program like Colorado State, but absolutely was the number one option like he always desired to be for that football program. Could one or two or three of these guys ultimately decide to do that? It's not out of the realm of possibility. So there's a lot of intrigue here and a lot to track when it comes to this tight end, tight end position for BYU. And we'll see ultimately uh, who ultimately gets the new uh, job as their position coach and who ultimately is still on the roster. We are still over or under a week away from the transfer portal opening uh, next Monday, December 4th. And we are already seeing a bevy of names, particularly quarterback talent, uh, hitting the portal or announcing they're going to go into the portal right away. We already saw Michael Daly announce from BYU officially that he's leaving the football program and you wish him well. Uh, he's a guy I would have tried out at tight end myself just to see if you could get anything out of him. But nonetheless, 
It's a crazy, crazy time, and it really feels like it's only going to get a little bit crazier before it calms down. And, of course, we'll have you covered every single day right here on Locked On Cougars. All right, real quick, a word on our friends over at Price Picks. Now, Price Picks is a fantastic way if you want to have some fun in the daily fantasy sports place. It is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're also the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you versus the number. Simple as that. And I'm competing against hundreds, if not thousands of other people trying to just get a, a sniff of any type of money. You can win up to 25 times your money this football season. You can do it uh, during the basketball season too. You select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Be placed in less than 60 seconds in all honesty, my friends. The best part is like you can play both football and basketball. If you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz, you can now find community plays under the promos tab of the Prize Picks app to use entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week week and uh, maybe pick against or with them and see if you both come out on top or if you beat them head to head. It's a really, really fun way. And the best part is they're also letting you test your skills and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn 10 bucks into 250 bucks with just a few taps on the prize pick app. So take advantage of it. Now, my friends go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. You heard that right. Put a hundred bucks in you have $200 to play with. It's simple as that. Once again, Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use the promo code locked on college for that first deposit match of up to $100 right now. It's all courtesy of friends at Price Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Perry Homes. Now, Perry Homes has got a great option or options, I should say, for you as a consumer. Whether you're looking for your first home or you're ready to upgrade to your dream home, Perry Homes has a house for you, everybody. For 50 years, Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state. They have many communities, home designs, and price points all designed with you in mind to meet your needs. They have beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, and Utah counties along the Wasatch Front, along with multiple communities in Washington County near St. George as well. If you want to live down, in the St. George, greater St. George area. Uh, Perry Homes offers over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to townhomes and everything in between to fit your needs once again. And they offer they are offering generous financing incentives through their preferred lender as well. So get on it today, my friends, and visit perryhomesutah.com to see what's new in Utah's, Utah's finest neighborhoods. Excuse me. That's Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, perryhomesutah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. If you've not done so already, uh, we are taking uh, entries uh, for a pair of tickets to go watch BYU and Fresno State play Friday night at the Delta Center. All you got to do to be entered to win is uh, to show that you are subscribed uh, to the show, whether you listen to it on the regular podcast feeds out there, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, leave us a rating and review if you don't mind as well. By the way, a five-star rating goes a long way uh, in terms of helping us continue to build the audience here. But at the same time, if you're watching this on YouTube, just email us. Locked on BYU at gmail.com. Let us know that you are subscribed to the show. Just show us a uh, photographic or screenshot evidence and you're entered to win. Simple as that. And we'll get you those tickets uh, to the lucky winner on Thursday. So you can go enjoy the night up at the Delta Center watching BYU and Fresno State Square Up. Also, I should announce this as well. We have just launched a new thing called Subtext. For the podcast. Now, what it is is subtext is a way to contact me directly and essentially have text conversations with me uh, directly. Now, it is a subscription based model. Let me be very clear about this. It is going to cost you some money if you want to do this, but think about it this way it is my goal to give you guys up to the minute inside intel if I am capable of doing it. And this is the way to do that. Literally, it will come to your phone in the form of a text message. It'll be like, hey, Jake here, I was out of practice, saw this. Uh, you're the first to know. Boom, it's out there and you guys have it on your phones literally in a matter of seconds. If you are interested in it, I will link it in the show notes, both on YouTube as well as our a podcast feed, and you can sign up now. Like I said, you have to pay some money. It's five dollars a month uh, to to join it. But like I said, you can uh, you can actually text me back and text me directly. You got questions? Uh, we're ultimately probably going to move our mailbag and make it exclusive to people who are uh, who are listening to us, or not listening to us, who are part of the subtext community uh, with us here on the podcast. Uh, a number of you have asked how you can better support the podcast and uh, help me travel to more BYU football games. This is a way to do it. I, I, and trust me, I am, I'm as reticent as anybody to ask you guys for extra money because 
all of us are are hard up. It feels like right now with Christmas upcoming and whatnot. But if you uh, have a, a desire to do it, it's five bucks a month. Uh, so that'd be 60 bucks a year, roughly. Uh, and like I said, it's a direct line of communication to myself. I'm excited for this. I'm excited to get you guys inside Intel and insight that you guys can't find anywhere else. And hope you guys will consider uh, signing up and being a part of the subtext community uh, here on Locked On Cougars as we move forward here. Once again, I'll, I'll link the uh, I'll link it in the show notes. And you guys, if you have questions, you can feel free to reach out uh, via social media or email, and I'll be happy to uh, explain further. All right. Uh, other show uh, notes to get to on today's show is congratulations uh, to BYU women's basketball uh, freshman sensation Kaylee Woolston for the second straight week. She has been named Big 12 Freshman of the Week. She is absolutely killing it for the BYU women's basketball team. She's leading BYU uh, this past week in scoring with 18 and a half points uh, per game, going 14 of 23 from the field at 60.9%. And oh, by the way, 9 of 12 from the three-point arc, that is 75%. Uh, she is absolutely on fire. She also added five and a half rebounds, two assists, and one and a half steals in each of their wins over both St. Louis and Loyola Marymount. So fantastic, fantastic stuff from Kaylee Wolston. She looks like an absolute star in the making for BYU. And the crazy thing is she's just six games into her BYU career. Also, this is awesome. BYU men's basketball. They have debuted in the national polls. A 6-0 start, uh, three wins over uh, fellow Power 6 teams in Arizona State, North Carolina State, and obviously San Diego State will get you that honor. Uh, They have ranked in the AP Top 25 in both the coaches' polls at number 19 this week, making their debut in the poll. Uh, They are back in the polls for the first time since December 6th of 2021. Really, really cool to see this from Mark Pope and his squad. This is much deserved. Obviously got a big opportunity this week uh, as they take on Fresno State to push that to 7-0. It really feels like in many respects, if BYU beats uh, Utah a week from Saturday, they'll be up at the Huntsman Center for their only true road game of the non-conference slate. If BYU can go to the Huntsman Center and win that game, it's not out of the realm of possibility that BYU goes into the month of January when they open Big 12 play against Cincinnati on January 6th with a gaudy 13 and 0 record and how high will BYU be ranked at that point if they are undefeated at that point they've already debuted they went from unranked they were I think unofficially 27th last week they leapfrogged eight other teams in the process and jumped to number 19 how high can they really rise we're going to find out uh, BYU officially per uh, uh, Tyson Jackson and BYU sports information they are 199 and 73 as a ranked team including a 7 and 3 record under Mark Pope when his program has been ranked uh, they're 16 and 3 all time ranked number 19 including a perfect 10 and 0 record at home uh, when they have been ranked at number 19 in the country. They are one of six Big 12 schools right now that are ranked, uh, joining number five, Kansas, number six, Houston, number nine, Baylor, number 16, Texas, and number 25, Oklahoma. Not bad, folks. Not bad at all for the team that was picked 13th out of 14 teams in the Big 12 this season. Now, uh, there's still a massive uh, bear trap out there looming with the uh, obviously the Big 12 schedule ahead of BYU this season. But there's no reason to think that Mark Pope and his squad can't really make some noise the way they are playing right now. They play for each other. They play a really high energy brand of basketball. In many respects, it really reflects a lot of what the NBA does. Take the good shots. Find the first good shot and take it. No hesitation. Rebound like demons out there. Get after it on the defensive end. It's really fun to watch BYU basketball play right now. And obviously a big opportunity uh, this week when they go to Delta Center for a neutral site matchup against Fresno State. Uh, BYU is pretty pretty decided favorites in this game because Fresno State very much in a rebuild mode. But, hey, the more basketball and the more high-level play from BYU basketball can put on the court, obviously is going to help them in the national rankings, and we'll be uh, tracking them because football season's over, folks. There's no more games to break down from BYU football, so our attention uh, has shifted to BYU basketball, and we'll be tracking these guys all the way through the month of February, if not March, and we'll see how it all goes as they make their first foray in the Big 12 Conference play in just over a month's time. All right, so there you go. Uh, That's everything I got for you guys on this Tuesday edition of the podcast. Once again, Connor Pay will be on the podcast tomorrow talking BYU offensive line. Uh, what does he make of the season as a whole? We'll ask him all those questions and more on tomorrow's edition of the podcast. We'll look forward to that. Make sure you do not miss it. And a big thank you once again for, uh, once again for being for, uh, every day here's with us here on the podcast as well as making locked on cougars your first listen of the day of course we'll be back with you guys again tomorrow talking with connor pay right here on the locked on cougars podcast see ya